All right, let's just jump right in. For pretty much all of human history, we've kind of taken rivers for granted, right? They're just there, a constant life support system. But what if I told you they're becoming the most strategic and yeah, the most contested economic asset of our time? So that's the big question we're gonna unpack in this explainer. Why this comparison, the next oil? We're gonna dig into why this is happening right now and what it really means for our economies, our towns and cities, and well, our future. And this slide, this really gets to the heart of it. We've shifted from seeing rivers as this abundant, reliable thing we could always count on to a totally new reality where they are stressed out and super unpredictable. You know, they're not just some pretty backdrop anymore. They are a central piece of our economic puzzle. And look, this isn't some sci-fi scenario for the future. This is happening now. The World Meteorological Organization pointed out that 2023 was one of the driest years in decades for a ton of major rivers. This isn't just a fluke. No, this is a sign of a massive change that's already here. Okay, so to really get why rivers are being called the new oil, we first have to wrap our heads around their incredible value. Let's break down exactly what makes them such a critical economic asset. I mean, just think about it for a second. The water we drink, the food we grow, the electricity that powers our homes, even the barges that move our goods, all of it depends on healthy rivers. They are the silent engine of, well, everything. They are the ultimate multitaskers. And that is the absolute crucial point. Think of rivers as the essential fluid that makes everything else work. Without a reliable flow of water, our energy grids, our farms, and our factories, they just can't operate at the scale that we need them to. Simple as that. And we are already seeing this drama play out in real time. Take the Colorado River, for example. It's a lifeline for 40 million people and a huge chunk of American agriculture. But now, it's so overused and stressed by drought that its future is a giant question mark. When a river that mighty starts to falter, you gotta pay attention. So when you have that kind of vulnerability and scarcity, well, that leads us right to our next point, the growing risk of competition and conflict. It's pretty simple, really. When a vital asset becomes scarce, people are gonna fight over it. And the scale of this risk is just wow. Research from the journal Nature is suggesting that by 2050, if we don't make some serious changes, up to 40% of the world's shared river basins could become hotspots for tension. That is a huge number. Now, this term, transboundary river basin, is absolutely key to understanding the geopolitics here. All it means is a river that's shared by more than one country. So what a country upstream decides to do with the dam, for instance, directly messes with its neighbors downstream. It creates this really complicated web of dependency and, yeah, potential friction. This table really brings that oil analogy home. Think about it. The pipelines and oil rigs of the 20th century in the water world, those are dams and river diversions. Those geopolitical flashpoints over oil fields, now they're becoming disputes between nations over water rights. It's the exact same dynamic, just with a different liquid asset. And this isn't just theory, it's real. Right now, on the Paraguay River, record low flows have pitted local fishers whose jobs are literally disappearing against rice farmers who desperately need that same water for their crops. This is what water competition looks like on a human level. Okay, but this whole story isn't just doom and gloom, not at all. With this huge risk comes a massive opportunity, an opportunity for innovation and adaptation. This challenge of water scarcity is actually pushing us to build a much more resilient future. This really requires us to flip our perspective. Instead of just seeing rivers as a source of risk, we've got to start seeing them as frontiers for new technologies, smarter policies, and totally new ways of doing business. This isn't just about surviving. It's about building an economy that's actually designed for a world with a changing climate. So how in the world do we actually do this? Well, the strategy kind of breaks down into three main parts. First up, on the demand side, we have to get way smarter about how we use water. Think super efficient irrigation. Second, the supply side. This means upgrading our infrastructure, both the concrete stuff and natural solutions. And finally, the institutional piece. We need better, more flexible agreements between countries on how to share this precious resource. And you know what? This is already happening. In the Rio Grande Basin, tens of millions of dollars are flowing directly into projects designed to build resilience against shrinking river flows. That is adaptation in action right there. So let's bring this all together and talk about the bottom line. 
Because at the end of the day, dealing with this new reality comes down to understanding and pricing the very real economic risks and costs involved. And the human cost? It's just staggering. Get this. A 2024 report from Vision of Humanity found that water scarcity and related problems helped displace over 32 million people last year alone. That's a humanitarian crisis with absolutely massive economic fallout. And these impacts, they ripple through every single level of our society. For individuals, it means lost jobs in farming or fishing and higher food prices. For our cities, it means soaring costs to keep clean water flowing. For industries, an unpredictable water supply is a huge operational risk. And for investors, well, a company's water security is now a make-or-break factor for its long-term success. So here it is, the new economic reality in one simple chart. As the supply, the river flow, goes down, the cost of that water and the risk tied to any investment that depends on it, they both go up. It's basic economics, but on a scale we just can't afford to ignore anymore. So look, if you take just one thing away from all of this, let it be this. Managing our rivers isn't just an environmental issue anymore. It's graduated. It's now a core pillar of modern economic strategy and risk management, period. And that kind of leaves us with one final thought. Every single one of us lives in a river basin. The real question is, do you know which one you're in? And maybe more importantly, how is your part of the world adapting to this new reality where water is, in fact, the new oil?